In today's cartoon story joke, an unfortunate misunderstanding unfolded in the Smith household, leaving everyone in stitches. The Smith family, desperate for a bundle of joy, decided to enlist the help of a surrogate father to assist with their baby-making endeavors. Surrogacy. From ancient awkwardness to modern marvels. Picture this. Ancient civilizations grappling with infertility, resorting to some seriously bizarre solutions. It's like a historical soap opera, but with more fertility gods and fewer commercial breaks. In the wild world of traditional surrogacy, couples look to their neighbors for a little baby-making magic. I mean, who needs Tinder when you've got your neighbor's spouse on speed dial, right? Talk about awkward block parties. But wait, there's more. Fast forward to the 1970s, where enterprising lawyers were drafting surrogacy contracts faster than you can say, test tube. It's like they were playing a real-life game of legal twister, twisting and turning through murky ethical waters. And let's not forget the Baby M saga, a legal battle so juicy it could rival any daytime drama. Custody disputes, birth certificates gone rogue, and enough courtroom drama to fill a season of law and order. Who needs Netflix when you've got real-life legal thrillers? But fear not, fellow humans longing for bundles of joy. Enter gestational surrogacy, where science and technology join forces to create modern miracles. It's like IVF meets the Jetsons, minus the flying cars, but with way more baby bumps. So buckle up, folks. From ancient baby-making antics to 21st century surrogacy showdowns, the journey to parenthood has never been more entertaining. Grab your popcorn and settle in for a wild ride through the wacky world of surrogacy. On the day that the surrogate father went to visit the Smith family, kissed Mr. Smith his wife goodbye early, and said, I have to go to work first, sweetheart. Good luck, and the surrogate should be here any moment. About an hour later, the doorbell chimed, and Mrs. Smith were greeted not by their expected guest, but by a baby photographer. Believing the photographer was their hired help, Mrs. Smith welcomed him warmly. Little did she know, the photographer's expertise lay in capturing babies on film, not in conceiving them. Good morning, miss, the photographer greeted. I came to... Oh no, there is no need to explain. Miss Smith said, I expected you here today. Really? Well, that is good. Did you know that babies is my specialty? The photographer said. Well, that is what me and my husband hoped. Please come inside and sit. Where do we begin? The woman asked. As the photographer launched into a spiel about his photography techniques, baths, couches, and beds, oh my. Mrs. Smith's confusion mounted. She couldn't fathom how she'd been attempting all the wrong positions for so long. In the bath and sitting room? No wonder nothing worked for us, Miss Smith said. Well, Miss Smith, unfortunately, I can't guarantee that every shoot is a good one, and therefore I try to use different positions in every six to seven corners. Then I am sure you will get different results that you would be satisfied with. My goodness, but that is a lot, Miss Smith said out of breath. Miss, in my work, a man must take his time. I don't believe to be in and out in five minutes. I doubt that you will be disappointed. The photographer took off his backpack and took out a portfolio of his baby photos. This is made on the top floor of a bus, the photographer said. My goodness, Miss Smith said and gripped to her throat. And these twins were made and came out perfectly, especially when you know the mother. She was a very difficult person. Difficult? Mrs. Smith's head was spinning faster than a tilt-a-whirl at a baby expo. Yes, she was so scared that I had to take her to the park to get the job done. People came to have a look at the wonders. What? Miss Smith said. And it went on for more than three hours. The mother kept on screaming I could barely concentrate, and when it began to get dark, I then had to start rushing my shots. The worst was when the squirrels started mumbling on my equipment. So, I stopped and packed up. Miss Smith leant forward, muttered dry mouth. What do you mean they nibbled on your equipment? It is true, Miss Smith. And just when Miss Smith believed she'd reached her threshold, 
the photographer mentioned something about setting up his three foot for the shoot. Mrs. Smith's brain short-circuited, and she hit the floor quicker than you could say, say cheese. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.